The next issue we're going to look at are criminal records. And on our checklist of documents, we request criminal convictions and arrest records of non-citizen all and citizens, but crimes of violence. So <clears throat> criminal records are very important, and it's very important that you get them and get the right ones. So um, we could go so deep into criminal immigration because there are a lot of crimes that uh, allow for waivers, and there's are crimes that create permanent bars to entry. There are some crimes that uh, are kind of one way or the other, and uh, there's a lot of gray area actually in the criminal record area because of the basic definition of of criminal conviction is uh, something that's hotly debated all the time by immigration lawyers. That we say that it wasn't a conviction. What are you talking about? And immigration service says, yeah, that was a conviction. So there's a lot of different things going on within criminal records, and it's way beyond the scope of this video. My goal is to show you how to get all of your records and what they're actually looking for. And if you get your records and you look at them and you say, hmm, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable going in front of the immigration service or the embassy with these records, then I really recommend you hire a lawyer to get an analysis done, criminal, criminal record analysis, to determine what the immigration um, consequences are. And so <clears throat> if you don't have your records and you're thinking you might be able to actually get away without presenting them, think again because now... You know, they have such vast databases with all of the criminal records tied into them. And if you lie on the application that you don't have a criminal conviction and they catch you, not only will they deny the application, but then they'll charge you with lying on the application, which will keep you from any further uh, immigration into the United States. So it's a very, very big deal. And rightly so, because we don't want to allow, you know, criminals who are going to come here and uh, kill people, you know, bottom line. <clears throat> so let's get into this because this is, this is very um, important. So I'm going to start with the idea of um, what actually is, what are the documents they're looking for when they say criminal records, okay? Well, here is, um, this is an example of a criminal record here. This is an Oregon Uniform Traffic Citation and Complaint, right? And... Um, this says here it is for down here driving while under the influence of intoxicants okay and so this looks good it's got a it's got a complaint number on it right uh, it says where it was what date um, and so this then is going to be what they consider to be an arrest record here's the um, you know it looks like um, expand this up here there's the bail here and, um, you know, there's the court date, right? There's the date back in 88. Um, so we would consider this to be a arrest record, all right? This was looks like it was written out in the, um, in the field by a police officer, all right? Um, or it says docket number court district, you know? So um, this is going to be, if they ask for an arrest record, uh, you know, traffic crime here, um, and it was an officer here, right? So this would be the arrest record. So they always want to know the arrest records, right? So that's a, that's an example of arrest record. Now, the court conviction here is going to be something that actually looks like a court pleading, and it's going to be signed by a judge, and it's going to have a different look to it. So whenever you have a some sort of court conviction, there's usually going to be an arrest record and a court conviction. So this is what they call the bill of information here. And so this is a, um, it's got the criminal docket number on it. It has the list, theft of movable property, theft by receiving stolen property, right? And so um, here's some of the terms, the first count, the second count, and uh, attorney for the Commonwealth. So this looks like... Uh, charges that are being brought up against this guy, right? So that would be part of the court record, right? And then this is the, um, you know, this one right here is like another part of it where the, the allegations are coming in, the last page of the allegations. Um, 
and this is obviously a stamp here. And they're going to be looking for these stamps to know whether or not this is a certified court copy because most of the time you're not going to be bringing in the original blue ink signed criminal court record, right? You're going to go and re request copies of those records. So they're going to be Xeroxed copied at some point, but there will be a stamp here, and this stamp uh, was going to need to show that it is an original with blue ink or some sort of embossing or something to show that this Xerox copy was actually issued by a court. So that's another thing to really make sure you've got when you're talking about certified copies. Of course, it's going to be a Xerox copy, but it's going to be certified by a court, right? Now, this here is um, it's pretty small. Let's 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 see if we can get this thing bigger here. Okay. This appears to be more like a docket transcript, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So this is what happened actually in the court, whereas beforehand those were the allegations against the, the person. This is actually what happened in the court. And let's see what we've got here. It'll say dates, um, you know, dates that things happened. Here's all the theft charges. Um, here's like some of the witnesses that were brought in. The Attorney General, right? Um, and then let's see. This is probably um, a document just talking about what happened in one of the court dates. Um, it's such a bad copy; you can't even see. But again, this is a certified uh, copy back in that from 1981. Okay, so that was something that happened in the court, and. This is the second page of that, it looks like. And um, the, we go through it. Attorney name and address. Right, this looks like pretty much the same thing as the first one, so that's going to be interesting. This looks like another uh, list of witnesses. And then this looks like um, this is another court document here. Um, so we've got the I accuse the above named defendant who lives at the address sent above or for these here and uh, the warrant of arrest. So here is an arrest warrant. So this would be part of the criminal record um, that you would uh, that they'd want to see. And then this actually bill of costs. So this bill of costs looks like the actual conviction record here. Because this says what all the charges were. Criminal conspiracy, theft, possession, um, manufacturing distribution of possession of device. Look here, pled, theft, guilty. Okay. Balance. No lay. No lay proceed. Um, and Judge Anthony Skirisa. All right, date of sentence October eighth, eighty two. And here's the fines coming in, right? And then the pay schedule, restitution. So this really does look like a conviction here. Here's a sentence. Lou sentence defendant released two and a half county probation, pay costs, use county. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Here's some payments going on. So then this, that is uh, what we consider to be the court records, a, a, a criminal case in court. So we have the arrest record, we have the court records. So if, the, uh, if a criminal conviction actually happened in the United States, those are going to be the two components of it, right? And so um, the other thing about it um, is that Police clearance certificates can be issued from foreign uh, countries. And so this police certificate clearance letter, then, is one by the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, Mounted Police, and it says, after review of the National Criminal Database, we've determined the following. There's her name. Uh, no criminal records were found. Okay. And when we're looking at a certificate, a clearance certificate like this, um, when you're 
when you're moving forward in the fiancé visa process, they're going to give you this letter here, which is documents required for immigrant and K visa applicants. Now, this is happens after you file your I-129F and after you go to the National Visa Center. This is actually issued by the consulate general. So the consulate sends you a letter, and in it's going to have another checklist of documents, documents required for immigrant and K visa applicants. So in this checklist of documents then, okay, there's the first page. Here's the second page. Look what it says right here, police certificates. Let's get this baby up here. There we go. Police certificates are required from, one, the police authority of your present locality issued within one year of the date of your visa interview. Two, the police authority of each locality other than those in the U.S. where you resided from one year or more since attained the age of 16, which certificate covers the entire period of residence in the locality and, okay, so, um, so here's where your present one is, all the other places you've lived. And again, if you've lived a lot of different places, this could take a long time to actually do this. So um, this is why I want you to get this heads up at the very beginning to know if you've moved around and you need a lot of police certificates, look, they're good for a year. Get going. Start to find those police certificates and get the police certificates. The police authority of any locality where you were arrested for any reason, regardless of how long you lived in that locality. So again, if you were arrested, then you need to get the police certificate from that as well. A police certificate is a certification by the appropriate police authority stating what their records show concerning the applicant, including any and all arrests, the reason therefore, and the disposition of each case of which there is a record. Okay. Um, so that is a pretty wide range of uh, information that they want from you. That's why we want to start early and get this stuff done. So in Canada, contact your local police service or the Royal Canadian Mounted Police regarding your criminal record check procedures. Certificates may be issued by any Canadian police force as long as they note that CPIC or the National Criminal Record Repository was searched using your name and date of birth. Requests to search include, include all names that you have used including a maiden name, a name from a previous marriage, or names prior to naturalization. And in most cases, a records check based on one's name and date of birth is sufficient. In some cases, a records check based on fingerprints may be required. If you have a record of conviction in Canada, request a search based on a full set of fingerprints. And then U.S. You're not applying police certificates from localities in the U.S. unless you have an arrest record there. Right. Because we don't really do that here. Uh, um police certificates from localities in the U.S. unless you have an arrest record there. So when you moved around, you know, don't need a clearance for in the United States. So this brings up the other issue, which is like, I can't remember when it was. I'm not quite sure where it was. You know, what you need to do then is you need to search a national database, right? So in Canada, you can check the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, and then they'll tell you, oh, yeah, you have a you got a hit on this date at this location. You had a uh, an arrest. So then that gives you oh good now I can go to that location to the police department there and find if there's an arrest record if there's a court there what the conviction record is and that's how you're going to know where to actually get the arrest record and the court records from. Okay. So that is going to be coming from your um, you know your packet when you're um, going down the road with your um, immigration case. However, if you know at the beginning, okay, my wife is from the Philippines, or my fiancé is from the Philippines, and um, I want to find out where I go to get the police record checks done there. Okay, we'll go to the embassy checklist here. we got the U.S. Department of State embassy links. Go to the embassy and see if there's actually any kind of information there about fingerprint checks. Now, it can be challenging. I'm going to tell you, man, it really can be challenging because, um, you know, a lot of times there's not a lot of good information on the embassy about uh, fingerprint stuff. So, but let's check it out. Here's immigrant visas. Let's go check on immigrant visas here. I'm going to make this smaller here. Okay. Uh, maybe a little too small. Sorry. And, okay, so... Going to go to immigrant visa appointment. Okay. And let's see if we 
uh, stuff in here. Uh, please check scheduling an appointment, interview, K1 interview preparation instructions. Oh, good. This is in English like they have it in Tagalog, too. Okay, great. So, here is our document. Now, this looks good. This looks like a nice document for us that we can use to determine where to go to get the uh, criminal records checks. So, they pretty much run the same way, just like the one that we saw for Montreal. We'll look through passport. There's your checklist of stuff. NDI clearance. Here it is. Green form. Applicant age 16 years or older must have a valid record clearance for travel abroad purposes from the National Bureau of Investigation. Clearances should be in the applicant's current name, birth certificate name, maiden name, and any other alias or nicknames used, including different spellings you have used in those names. An official letter of explanation from the NDI is required for any notation of no criminal record or no pending case. For immigration purposes, an NDI clearance is valid for one year from the date it was issued. The NDI website is here. It gives you a link. Look at that. A link right there. So um, this is what I'm saying. On the front end, they're good for a year. Start working on police record checks. Very, very important. Um, and this is going to get you right over to here to, to this one. So great. Um Finally, let's see, that is our other one. Here is our good old FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Now, remember, we're talking now for fiancé visas about U.S. citizens who actually have convictions for domestic violence or any kind of crime of violence to prevent the trafficking of women in the United States to be subsequently uh, abused by men. And so, the FBI, if you do have a domestic violence conviction, or uh, you have a, maybe a fighting thing that you're not quite sure of, you can get an FBI record check. And the FBI record is going to tell you, uh, won't give you a lot of information like an arrest record or a record of conviction from a court will, but it will give you a lot of information about the case number, the date, the location of the court, and then you can go and go to the court and get those documents. So as attorneys, we love to do FBI record checks because it gives us a really quick run through of all the stuff that uh, is gone on in someone's life when they can't remember. And let's face it, a lot of times you can't remember. It's really old or it's really traumatic and you don't want to remember. So. So, so here, we'll just go through, through this real quick. It's pretty easy. Submitting an identification record request to the FBI. Complete the applicant information form. Okay. So um, the applicant information form here is, uh, you know, what is the reason for your request? You're going to go through this form. You're going to print it out and um, get that done. It just gives you all the information. Complete your mailing address. By your telephone, telephone number, email address, address available. available. And I have had the FBI actually call our office to double check on stuff. So it is good to give them all that information for sure. Obtain a set of your fingerprints, okay? Provide the original fingerprint card. Previously processed cards or copies will not be accepted. Your name and date of birth must be provided on a fingerprint card. Fingerprints should be placed on a standard fingerprint form FD-258. And then look at that. You can actually print out an FD-258 now. And take and you can do it yourself. You can actually like go to Staples and have those little fingerprint things or Office Max or whatever, and you can actually do your own fingerprint. The hard one here is those uh, the four, you know, um, the ones down here, you got to put like all four fingers down flat. That can be kind of tricky. I, I recommend you go to a police station and have them do them there because they are the professionals after all and they do a really a nice job and they're going to they have the cards and they'll just keep doing if they mess them up they'll just do another one right there include rolled impressions of all 10 fingerprints and impressions of all 10 fingerprints, 10 fingerprints taken simultaneously these are sometimes re Referred to as plain or flat impressions if possible have your finger saying by fingerprinting technician i agree um and then, and then submit your payment. payment. It's eighteen dollars, and or you can do the credit card payment form, and um, review the FBI identification record request checklist here. So you have to get a picture ID and other things like that. And here's where you mail it, and uh, that's how you're going to get your FBI record check here. So 
that, that is it on obtaining criminal background checks for the U.S. citizen who has a problem and for the incoming fiancé.